Hello everybody, this is Debbie from Stamps and Stuff and I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator based out of beautiful Lake Havasu City, Arizona and it is absolutely a spectacular day out there. It's probably 74-ish outside this morning and it, the sun is shining and it is just great. So here we are, we're on video number five in a week with the chick and today we are going to be doing the outhouse card so anyway that is so fun okay to get a little housekeeping out of the way um I have my online class to go still open. It generally closes on the 15th of the month because we had a holiday and my computer was down. Um, I am holding that open for another couple days. And these will be the cards we are doing. And these, I don't know if you can see very well on the camera, but they have a real 3D effect to them. This one is a fun fold, and this one is a bendy card. And if you are on my team, you get this class free. You get the, the PDF and the video totally free, and they will not be available to the public. They're on a, you have to have the link to watch these videos. Okay, and I have three pricing structures on them. The all-inclusive, which would handle, have the die and the, um, the dies and the stamp set and all the DSP um, ribbon and the pearls. Or if you have the bundle already and you want just the tutorial and the video and uh, the ribbon and the pearls and the cardstock kit. There is a bundle price for that. And then if you want the PDF or and the um, video only, there's a price for that. So if you are interested in the class to go, email me, go to stampsandstuff.org and email me, hit the contact me button, or, whoops, gonna have an accident here. And hit the uh, contact me, or you can get me at Debbie at stampsandstuff.org. Or I have three emails, but they're all on the website. Okay, then uh, this month's paper pumpkin is going to be on encouragement and it is cards also and if you would like to sign up for paper pumpkin you can go to the website stampsandstuff.org up at the top you can you will see paper pumpkin and you can click on that and you can uh, sign up to be in my paper pumpkin and we have lots of ideas uh when the paper pumpkin comes out, lots of alternative ideas for you. And if you're local, we meet together. Uh, as the group gets bigger and bigger, we will eventually have a Zoom meeting for that also. So that's that. This week's class, I'm going to give a little tease. If you are in the Lake Havasu area, this is one of the cards we will be doing. Now this one is watercolor and these two are blends. And this, it looks difficult, but it really is uh, very easy. So if you're in the area, give me a call. Come see us. We have a great group of ladies. We have, some of us have been stamping together for over 20 years. So it is a really great group. Then I appreciate all the likes and shares and comments and everything. And I am just getting my YouTube um, channel going. So I am... Um, I've hit over 200 subscribers now. When I hit 300, which I'm hoping we can do in about the next week, I am going to have a drawing for the Touch of Ink. 
So everybody that's been sharing and commenting and everything, they will be in this drawing for this besides being in the regular drawing. So I appreciate your support and I appreciate you helping me to build my channel. So that will be that. The, the regular drawing, we will have your choice of two, two different stamp sets or the, the new paper pumpkin. That will be the, our other drawing. So uh, the more we build, the more drawings we'll have. I would like to eventually end up having a drawing for every video, but that's, that's kind of on the horizon a bit. But anyway, I so appreciate all the uh, comments and the emails. I get up really early in the morning, and that's really a high point of the day is to read through the emails and and see just little snippets of your life, where you're from and what's going on and just things like that. I just love it. I'm very humbled by the support and I appreciate it. Okay, and for the classes to go, if you're on my team, you get those free. But, and if you are interested, now is the time to sign up. Um, for your $99 to sign up with Stampin' Up, you get $125 in product. That's product of your choice. You can choose anything your little old heart desires. Stampin' Up then is going to also give you, there's over, there's 200 sheets of DSP here. They are the four color families and the, the current in color and, um, they have, these are also a sneak peek of the new, the new designs for the new June catalog. And um, on these, you'll see there's two designs here. And then when you flip these over, there's two others. But these designs will be in the new catalog. So that's kind of a sneak peek on that. And uh, really cool. And also, there is a voucher for a paper pumpkin so that you can try out the paper pumpkin and believe me, you'll love it. We just are having so much fun. We meet together every month, uh, those that are my subscribers to uh, Paper Pumpkin, and um, we do alternates. And so you can check on my website and go um, up in the search bar, put Paper Pumpkin, and you should pull up the last uh, couple months that we've done with the Paper Pumpkin. So there's lots of ideas, and we will always be giving you lots of ideas for your Paper Pumpkin besides what the kit. And I know the last month's kit was for eight cards. I got 15 out of it, and they were not just rinky-dink cards either. They were pull-outs and fun folds and all kinds of stuff. So anyway, that's fun. So I think we are ready to get going here. Put all this stuff so that it over on my side counter there. Okay, today we will be using the Hey Chick, the Chick Dies, the Hey Birthday Chick, and the birthday chick dies. Now this Hey Chick was a celebration uh, stamp set for, I think it was 2017 anyway, just wildly popular. So they brought it back and then this one is uh, in the catalog. So anyway, I hope they add to this because I have got so many ideas for these sets and um, I have so many stamps and I've got to get to the others and get them demoed, but I can't get past these chickens anyway. So let's get started here. Um, again, this is what we're doing. And the chickens have commandeered the latrine. So anyway, too cute. Okay, put these here. Now, you do not have to worry about any dimensions or anything. This is a copy. I have all the PDFs done. They're posted to my website. The, it, that post is not live. As soon as I finish this video, I will post it, do the last minute um, 
things that I have to do to the website and then the whole post will go live and it will have all five of the cards and they have individual videos and individual PDFs that has, see you will have a picture of the front, a picture of the inside, you will have all the dimensions and of course this one I had to go back and, and check with it and if anybody runs into a mistake in any of the PDFs, let me know as soon as possible so I can get it corrected. But this last one, I had three different corrections I had to make in it. So anyway, but it has exactly the measurements on your wood panels and uh, everything. So it is all here and ready to go. And coupled with the video, you should be just like a class. So anyway, that's my gift to you. And I thank you for the support. And if you don't have a demo, I would love to earn your business. And uh, our group, we have a blast. And um, it's just a fun place to be. So anyway, let's get going here. Okay, get my bits and pieces. Okay, and my lumber yard delivers exactly how they are supposed to be. This is, this is the front panel, and this is on the back, and that's that one. And we will, we will go through those in just a second here. Okay, first thing I want you to do as you are cutting your lumber and all the measurements are on the PDF you're going to take let me see oh I don't have one that's done both sides anyway this one just imagine this is stamped see it's stamped okay so what you're gonna do here and it is on the instructions we are going to mark it what you'll have is you will have your two panels Actually, I'm going to cut these at three and a quarter by five and a quarter. What I did is I did quarter sheets. It's three and a quarter, and I'm going to cut both of them at once. So I have three and a quarter by five and a quarter. Pretty good sawmill, huh? <laughs> okay. And then, of course, here are all your instructions on exactly how to cut each piece. But these are the two, and I'm going to place them in front of me like this. So I will have it stamped on the front. This is stamped on the back, and then the next. See how you have this? In other words, this is going to be the front, this is going to be this panel, and this will be this one. So, I'm going to put it here, and I am going to mark this three and a half inches up. Right there. And I will get my... cutter here and I'm going to place this in the trough and this this would be the top top left corner so I am going to cut that and I'm cutting both pieces at the same time so they will the doors will everything will match up and you won't have them different sizes because you are a hair off okay 
And then what you're going to do with all of the panels and all of the wood pieces, I've taken my soft suede and my little sponge dauber, and I am going to weather the wood. And it won't matter where you marked to cut because it's going to be covered. So you just go around and you just weather the wood and you will do that on both sides of this one because that's stamped, remember. You will want to do this too so that it looks good on the inside here. Okay, so you will want to do those and then also you will want to do all of your little, all of your pieces that you cut. Okay. And then when I get them all cut, I take and I set them out. So I know wh what panel they go on. Okay. This is the front door. I've got two side panels here. And you'll be able to see, and I made the pictures on the PDF big enough you could see. This will be your roof, and this will be the panel here at the bottom. So that is the front. Then on your inside, whoop, the inside one, which would be this way, I have these two panels. So this is the front, this is the back, and then this here is this side. And I will have the two side panels. Now these are wider, and this is the panel, which actually, this is the commode. And these here, are your hinges so you have them all set out there so when you start putting this together it goes together easier okay now there was something else I was gonna say but I don't have it can't bring it up so my mama used to say must have been a lie okay so here's our front okay now then what I use and I love this product these are the foam adhesive sheets instead of picking 97,000 dimensionals out all the time I can just cut these in one shot for my boards Now, if you want to, and I was going to do one to see how it looked, you can just glue these <clears throat> straight on the piece. But my favorite motto in class is, when in doubt, pop it out. Because there's something about when you pop this up, it gives a shadow in there which creates dimension. On your project and you'll get a much better finished project now yes it's going to create more issues when you deliver it but if you're you know you go to all the trouble of making it buying the stamps putting it together and then we're quibbling over a few cents on postage <laughs> to me that seems a little silly anyway but um, you can send them in the um, the clear boxes that Stampin' Up! has. In fact, let me run get one and I will show it to you. It's right over here, I think. Wait a minute. Whoop, because I just got them. Did I not put them up? 
No, I didn't put them away. Whoop. Here they are. I knew I had one set up. Like I say, no matter how much I prepare to go live, I'm not prepared. Okay, so, and then what I do is I put, this is just a quarter sheet in, and I would put my return address and the address here, and then I put my card in like this and seal it up. And they really, as long as you take a piece of packing tape and get this edge and this edge, they are quite sturdy. So they're a good way to mail. And uh, you can go to my online store and these are available. But this also does go in an envelope. And when you're putting something in that has embellishments on it, put it in this way. So there you go. It goes in in the envelope. But when by doing it that way, everything on the front doesn't get hung up on this envelope lip right there. So anyway, that takes care of that. We'll put that back aside. Okay. So back to our building. Okay. Just getting some of these done. Okay. And basically, it is just assembling them. And these are long enough that you will be able to cut them off at the top. And when I mount these, I don't mount it flush against here. I give it... Oh, an eighth of an inch or whatever. And it's going to hang over and that's okay because we are going to clip it. So this goes together fairly quick. put this here so I won't be sticking to my surface okay now this one I do d use dimensionals and I will put these kind of right in the center And then I'm going to put just a little bit of glue on both sides here. A little bit. Less is more with this glue. And then I'm going to put our side board or bottom board right there. I'm going to take this and then I'm going to... Everybody should have a pair of just, you know, long bladed scissors. These have been around since probably the wheel was square, but they work. All righty. Now then, we're going to take our roof. And I'm going to mount this. I also have small scissors that have Teflon coated blades so that they don't um, gum up with the glue. Okay, now I'm going to take and put a little bit of glue on that edge, pull it off my cover. There we go. Now this I am going to cut flush with the edge. And 
And this one, I am going to leave that, oh, say this much overhang right there. Then on this side, see how this is, this is not covered because we do not have both sides of our boards done. What I'm going to do is I am going to take and I am going to glue a piece in here on the back so that when you open that, you're not going to have that showing. And then I'm going to turn it back around this side and I'm going to clip that right off there. And then on the edges, then I'm going to weather these edges. Now, there's one thing, and I thought about this last night, and I don't know, this is where I drive my students nuts. The next one I am going to make, I don't know exactly whether it's going to look that much better, but see this board? I have notched out little edges. So in other words, what you would do is you take your scissors and just notch them just a little bit. My daddy was a detail person. I channel, I channel him. <laughs> okay. So you cut these little pieces out. And then you burnish this edge. So in other words, it looks like it's been there for a year or two or 10 or 12. See those edges? So feel free to do that. I'll try one. But uh, like I say, I just thought of it last night. So, okay, now what we're going to do is we have to have the universal sign of the Lutrine or outhouse. Let me use the, the little ones here. Put that there. Now, how I did this, let me get my, is I have a one inch hole punch and I punched it out. Now I'm going to go over next to it, see, like this, just enough to get the crescent. And there you go. So that's how you do that. Okay. All righty. Now I'm going to wait to decorate the front till I get the hinges and everything on and my background. Okay. Now this is the inside of the door. Forgive me, I have to try something here. No. Okay, no, I'm gonna have to, I'm trying to figure out how I get my comments up. I will have to research that out a little bit, find somebody, if anybody works with Switcher Studio, 
how to get the comments so I can see who's with me and interact. That's going to be where it's going to be really fun when I get to be able to interact with everybody. And that's that will be on the agenda. My computer is having conniption fits because it does not like to interact with iOS programs. a bit persnickety okay then I'm gonna clip this right at the edge and this one there we go and then whenever you snip remember like good painters we have to Fix our edges so that we've got all the edges are detailed out. We don't want to have any, any of them sitting there undone. Okay, so this door is done. Now we're going to do the back door, back, back of the outhouse. Love, love, love these. Oh my gosh, it makes life wonderful. Okay. So here we go. Remember, put it over from the edge. You don't want it right on top of the edge. Whoop, that board looks like it's kind of cattywampus. Well, it is down now. Yep, it's down now. It is, let me see. Yeah, it's about a 30 second off. But it's an old outhouse. It's kind of, maybe it's leaning. We'll just say that. Okay, now we're going to cut this off again. And fix our boards. And also, if you have that white up there, I have it to where if you look at this, you're not going to see a lot of white in there. And here, even where the hinges are, I took this marker and I marked on the back side of the hinges. But if you get a piece that's sticking out there, you know, kind of like gray hairs on your head, they're like traffic lights. I mean, they just say, look at me. So there you go. That way it's not just standing out there. That's why actually bring these not quite to the edge and you won't have that problem so much because they won't show. Okay, now then we are going to put our... Now this actually, and I wondered how I was going to get kind of a toilet seat on there, but then I thought, oh, well, everybody kind of knows that that crossbar is... <laughs> That's where you go. So anyway. So I'm going to put these here. Cover the center. Take off the covers. Bentley, that's just daddy. He thinks he's the, the Gestapo. Okay. So we have our front, our back of our front, and our 
inside. Okay, so let's focus kind of on the inside here. All righty, I am going to take my little eggs here. And we want to, whoop, where's my little unbelievable how you can lose something in a such a small area. But I'm talented that way, so now I'm going along the edges because you know anybody that's had chickens, you know those eggs are not clean. Those chickens just don't take care of their laundry like they should. Okay. Remember, we used to have to, when we first moved to Havasu, we had horses, and Tim was president of the equestrians, and... Um, we had chickens. We had the neatest chicken coop. It had a thatched roof and it had a grape stake fence around it. And I had the most beautiful vine on it. You could stand right next to that chicken coop and you wouldn't even know there was a chicken coop. It was the coolest thing. So, okay, now I am going to set some eggs in here. Okay. Let me go in this way. Okay, I'm going to put one kind of back here. It's almost going to fall in the latrine. Put this kind of over here. And this one I'm going to put... A small dimensional and these small pieces these are left over from the paper pumpkin kits you always end up with so many leftovers I made 15 cards and I still have leftovers okay so I'm going to put this guy oh kind of right there okay now then Take my silicone sheet here, put my glue down, because I always forget to run the die cuts with the, the sticker sheets. Okay, I get a sponge here. Now this glue will dry on there, but it will not stick permanently. When it's dry, you just rub your finger and it rolls all up. And this is a great tool. Okay, now I am going to put my happy birthday right here. And then Every self-respecting outhouse needs to have toilet paper. I guess it could have corn cobs or the Sears and Roebuck catalog. Okay, I'm going to put a little, I rolled this up. I'm going to put a little bit of glue right here and roll it this way. Now, this is your dilemma. Are you going to put the toilet paper rolling that way? Or are you going to put it rolling this way? Now, in my bathroom, they're always going this way. But in this outhouse, 
they are going to go the opposite way. And I know that is quite the question in every household is how do you have the toilet paper rolling? So there we go. Now we are going to get ready and color our guys. I have a piece here to color to show you for any of you that want to know how they are colored. This is just very, I have very basically colored them. Okay. And what I do is I put all the colors that I think I'm going to use on my sheet and I label them so that I know when I grab them how deep that color is going to be. There's nothing worse than getting it all colored in and then think you're grabbing, getting a, something's going to be light and it ends up to be dark and ruins your whole thing and your day and everything else, so... Okay, I'm taking the light so saffron and I'm laying down a base coat here. And I know there are a lot of people that start with their dark color first. But I like to get that paper wet so that it it can blend. Now let me see here. Okay, I'm going to have to figure that out, how I can get you zoomed in. I don't know how, how easy this is for you to see. Okay, now I'm going to take my, I'm going to, this is a So Saffron light. Now I'm going to go to the Light Mango Melody. And I'm going to, whoop, the other side. And I am going to just flick on this side because my sun is coming this direction so that means the shadows are going to be on the other side a little bit there a little bit down here now I'm going to go back to my light and what I'm going to do see how you can see there's kind of a harsh line right there I'm going to take this and I'm going to go just on the edge and I'm going to continue to flick all the way up. And what that does is it blends it in. So it takes away that harsh line because shadows don't appear in just a harsh line. They're just kind of a shadow. Not that you notice it, but then the only thing your eye is going to notice is it looks like a three-dimensional object. Okay, my light pumpkin pie for his little beak and his feet. And I'm going to put just a little bit there. Now, what I'm going to do is I am also going to lay down a light coat there. Then I'm going to start with my bullet tip, and I am going to kind of take care of his wild hair. Gotta love this guy. Okay, now I'm going to go to the uh, dark pumpkin pie bullet end, and I am going to, especially here, I am going to continue to flick in, and I am just flicking in, and I'm not getting all of the hair. I'm just, whoop, I am getting it stuck to my silicone sheet is what I'm doing. Okay, now then I am going to put a little bit of red in there. It's a red head. Got just some there right in the center. So that's about it. 
Then this guy here, which is on the front, I am just going to take, and you always work on the side of the tip of your, if you color constantly on the tip, you will tweak your tips. So you want to work on the side of your markers. Okay, now I'm going to go back with the Daffodil Delight, or the Mango Melody, and I am going to flick in this color. Now I'm going to go back to the light, and I'm going to take care of those edges again, because you don't want, you just don't want harsh edges but if you blend that whole thing then all you're going to do is you're going to blend your light and dark together and then you're just going to have one color so all righty now we'll take care of his you see the pressure that's on these that's why I, and I've heard on some of the blogs and everything how people have, sometimes their, their alcohol markers drip. What happens is you build a lot of pressure in this cylinder here. And if you have one that is leaking, immediately pull the other side off and let the pressure equalize. That will stop it. So there's nothing, nothing wrong with the marker. They just because alcohol dissipates really quick so they have to have a cap that's on there really tight to keep the markers from um, just drying up really fast so anyway that's whoop, I want the other side here so here we're going but that will and there's nothing wrong with your marker it's just the pressure builds up Okay, so there we go. Now we take them over and we die cut them. And through the miracle of video, voila, there they are. Okay, so this little guy here. Take my dimensionals and I also like to take any item that I want a little dimension on and I kind of do this so that they they're rounded their body is round and you want it to kind of show that way Looks like I'm still on air. Okay, so here he is sitting up there. Now also, in the dies, there is a little die like this. And what you can do is you could say, put it right there and make your little flag, your triangle flags and put them on so that they have little streamers. They're having a party or whatever. Okay. So then, now, what I'm going to do is I am going to glue this glue my hinges in so our doors will stick together. I'm going to have to lift, I'm going to have to kind of lift that up and leave that and then glue it in because my hinge is going to go in there 
So anyway, I'm kind of gluing it right to this edge and then putting it under that one board. Okay, now let's get our front done here. Let that dry. And because I didn't put my sticker sheets on the back, Okay, and I will put my put my corn cobs put just a little bit of glue on the bottom of my corn cob. Where's my take your pick tool? Here it is right here. Then I will grab the husk. Let me see, how many corn do I have on there? Okay, my husband advised me that the corn does not grow on the bottom of the stock. And I had to tell him that in my world, it does. So all of you farmers out there that know how it really should be, you can put all yours on the top. And I understand there are generally two and sometimes three to a stock. I always thought there was a whole bunch of corn on the stock. But, you know, I grew up in Southern California I was not a farm girl, although neither was my husband, but he knew. So all you farmers out there actually know how it should be. Okay, now let's put her... Okay, so I want to put a little bit of glue right here. And then, and the reason I'm using both is because, see, there's kind of a step down. There's two levels, so I've got the dimensions on the one and the glue right there. And so we put her right there or him, whatever. Now that this, I should have put these eggs in after, after the fact. Okay, now then, I am going to glue this them even and I don't want the corn sticking through and actually this should this egg should be sitting on top of there I don't know if I can get that one out let me see Aha. Uh -huh. Glue this little guy back in. There we go. So, what I want to do is I want to take a stylus right where this is going to close and I kind of want to score that right where it's going to 
close. Make sure that is all righty. Now, like I say, see how these are showing? I don't like that. So you're going to take your little spray painter here and you're going to paint these hinges. Because we are a class building company. We don't do anything halfway. All righty. Now then, we're going to get our card base and this is four by five and a quarter. The dimensions are on the PDF. You want to put your sentiment clear as far up in the corner that you can and have it still look good. So that, in other words, you don't want your, your outhouse sitting over the top of your, of your sentiment. But I want to leave, you know, oh, an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch that I can glue that outhouse so that it it's kind of framed in also. All righty. Now I'm going to take the back of our little outhouse and I am going to mount our little outhouse about right there. And there you pretty much have it for the envelope. We're going to take our Memento Tuxedo Black and let me get my thingy out of here so I don't get glue all over me. And for the front, Stamp straight down, hold a couple seconds, straight up, and then also, whoop, <laughs> and never fear when you're on live. What you should always do, and I tell my students to do it, but you know what? It's like do as I say, not as I do, but you will stamp your envelope correctly. In other words, you stamp him on the front and not this way because I've got him like this. So anyway, you will do it correctly. And then on this side, I have the little dude with all the hair is stamped there. Okay, also, I know I forgot one thing and you cannot forget it. You have to take and give him, oh, we didn't get his bow tie on either. Good grief. He's going to go to the party without a bow tie. Okay. Put your two little glue dots there. And... Stick his little eyes in. And his bow tie, I put it, now on this chicken, there's a little kind of feather mark 
right up there on his neck. That's where I put just a tiny bit of glue. So that I can put, I want to put his bow tie so that it is up, but right there. Okay. And there you have it. There's your inside. And there's your front. And that's about it. Don't forget to go to the website, stampsandstuff.org. I will give me probably a half hour, 45 minutes to, I want to upload this video onto the website so that it's right in its post. It's got its little place. All I have to do is upload it in there. The PDFs and everything are all done. The post is there, ready to go. And then I'll hit the live button. So in about an hour, two hours, it will be totally live. And you can go and you can get the uh, PDF for all five of the, um, the cards that we've done in this series. And all the PDFs are separate. That way, if you don't want to do them all, you don't have to print them all off. The, the PDF, it will say click for PDF here, right underneath the photograph for that card and above the video for the card. So right in between, there's a little line and you'll see the here because it's bold. Click it, it takes you right to the PDF and you can, you can print that. So anyway, I appreciate you and please like, share, comment, subscribe, tell me where you're from, a little bit about you. I love getting to know everybody. If you are looking for a demonstrator, I would love to earn your business. I would love to build my team and have you in it. And um, also for every order that goes in with this host code that's $35 or more, gets not only a free card, handmade card by me, that I send to everybody that places an order, no matter what the size is, everybody gets that, but you will get a surprise little gift from me. And that is in addition to anything you might get from Stampin' Up! Like right now we're in celebration, so if you are have a $50 net sale, you will qualify for one item in the celebration catalog and then it goes in $50 increments. So if say if you were to spend $150, you would get you could get $100 item and one $50 item or three $50 items. Now, if your order is over $150 before taxes and shipping, don't use the host code because I want you you at that point qualify for your rewards and I want you to have those. When the order comes through, I will see it and I will go ahead and and send that gift to you so um anyway i think that's a bit about it if there's anything that you'd like to any stamp sets you'd like to see uh demoed let me know i'd be happy to accommodate you if i possibly can i'm kind of scanning around here i think i've covered everything so anyway have a great rest of the day and uh, I'm off to get my start getting my classes prepped and